Hi, this is Margaret from dataminingdna.com, and this is a quick video about a massive change that 23andMe has rolled out to its customers without, as far as I'm aware, any prior notification. Now, it's possible that they sent out an email and it, on the 23andMe customer, it's possible it went into my junk folder, I didn't see it. But if I go into my notifications here, all I'm seeing in terms of these notifications are you know, new relatives, new relatives, new relatives. Do they come in once a week? I'm not sure. And then this COVID thing. So what's the change? Well, if I go into Family Union Friends, go to View All DNA Relatives, do you see any big message here, like at the top, saying we've made a change? Uh, no, I don't see it either. No announcement, no nothing. This is here, showing 1,500 of 1,500 relatives. What 23andMe have done is that they've reduced the cap on the number of relatives that you see. It was 2,000 and it was a rolling 2,000. So as new relatives came in, you know, the bottom relatives would roll up off the bottom of the list. What they've done is they've reduced that cap down to 1,500. Once your new relatives still come in and, you know, the lower centimorgan or the lower percentage relatives kind of age out of the list, but it is a total drop of 500. This um, this video is mid-October. My understanding is that they started rolling this out in uh, true September, and it's gone out, I think, region by region. So it didn't hit everybody at the same time. Now, what I've done is I've put together a detailed article on our blog, which I will link to in the description below, which just noticed, this is hot off the press, I just noticed that I haven't put in a table of contents. I'm just going to pause the video and stick in a table of contents. Okay, I'm back. Just going to refresh this page. Table of contents. So this is a much lengthier article that goes into the background and some of the effects. For this video, I'm just going to keep it quite tight. First of all, I'm going to tell you that it may not have already been rolled out to you. It's They're rolling it out by chip. So if you're on the chip, the latest chip, which is the V5 chip, this is hitting you. If you're on an older chip, the V4 or V3, it may not have reached you yet. Okay. So the next thing I want to say to you is that what 23andMe are doing is that they're offering a premium package, or they're calling it, I think, the plus package, in which you can pay a subscription. It's 30 bucks, I think it's $29, if you're eligible. And you can, that will give you additional health reports, and it will also give you DNA relatives, up to 5,000 DNA relatives. Okay, so they take away 500 from everybody, and some people can pay to get an increase in terms of DNA matches, DNA relatives to 5,000. Thing is, not everybody is eligible at the moment for that unlock process. If you see this at the top of your DNA relatives list saying unlock DNA relatives, it's a link, DNA relatives plus, then you are eligible to pay the extra 30 bucks. So who is eligible at the moment, and this is October 2020, you must be resident in the United States, you must have tested on the V5 chip, and you must have purchased the health package. Now there's two main packages available from 23andMe, but not available everywhere. So there's an, a reduced price, I think it's called Ancestry plus Traits, and then there's a, yeah, Ancestry plus Traits which doesn't give you some additional health reports. And then there's the Ancestry Plus Health, which is more expensive. Unfortunately, well, because I'm not resident in the United States at the moment, it doesn't, I mean, I have the health package, but I can't buy this. I'm resident in Ireland. Now, <laughs> for some countries, Ancestry Plus Health isn't available. This guy, I'm just quoting a guy from a forum who's saying, he, he's, he's in Italy, he's saying, guys, at least you have the luck to be able to pay the pizza. I cannot do that because being in Italy, I've only the answer to traits. What does he mean by pizza? <laughs> well, in, it's an Italian word for protection money paid to the mafia, often in the form of forced transfer of money resulting in extortion. So <laughs> how do you see 23andMe taking away or reducing the functionality to a paid customer and then saying, we'll actually give it back to you if you pay more. Now, what 23 and me are saying is, well, we're actually giving you more. Instead of just getting it back up to 500, instead of getting an extra 500 to bring you back to what you already had, we're going to give you, if you have them, three and a half 
thousand, is it three and a half thousand um extra? Now the thing is I don't believe I have that many DNA matches. I think I might be able to get up to maybe two thousand five hundred on twenty three and me, I just don't know. I'm not even given the option to pay to get back what I've lost. Which is um which is interesting. This purge, this isn't the first time I've written about a purge. You might think, oh, is this deja vu? Let me just stick in purge. A purge. Yeah, here we go. Two shown. Here on the right, impact of ancestry removing your DNA matches in 2020. So I had a full article on ancestry dropping their matches. I would just point out that, you know, ancestry, they gave customers three weeks notice. And then they gave an extra week after those, those huge amount of complaints. And when you logged in to Ancestry for, you know, a, a time before, the month before they started their purge, there's a big, massive big notice at the top telling you what they were going to do. 23andMe is like, boom, done. Oh, by the way, <laughs> if you log in, you, you may or may not notice that you lost these matches. So is there anything you can do about this? I'm going to jump down to a section in the article called Temporary Workarounds. And this is a roundup of methods that other posters have mentioned on social media and blog posts that work for them. During September, and indeed in the earlier part of this month of October, Now I've tried them, and I don't think they're working any longer, and this is now mid-October. So one of the ways, and would have been a really effective way, was to download your relative's file. You use the 23andMe export function, which I'm very pleased that they provide. You export your relatives to a local file, and some people are reporting that the extra relatives, the additional 500 or however many more they had above the 1500 cap, were actually in the download file. If you're not sure about how to download your relatives, I'm just I'll just do a quick demo. So I'm on the DNA relatives page here, and you just scroll right down to the bottom of the page. So at the very very bottom, you've got this link in blue. It's not obvious what is what the heck is aggregate data, um, but this is the way that you download. Just click the link, give it a little bit of time, and see down here in the download section of the browser is telling me that a file has downloaded. So I can just go to my download folder on my local machine, and there is a CSV file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the CSV file in my spreadsheet application of choice, which happens to be Excel. So I'm just going to save this as a Excel spreadsheet. When I was looking at this, you know, people were saying, well, they, they were getting more than their 1500 relatives in here. And I scroll down to the bottom when I originally took this down, maybe yesterday or so, and I spotted that I had more than 1500 relatives. I thought, okay, well, that's great. I must be getting the extras. But when I was preparing for this today's video, I realized that I was getting multiple lines for particular matches. And then I realized that this spreadsheet, row by row, is not an individual match per row. It's an, individ an individual match per segment. So for matches to me that where I match on two segments, I'll get two rows and I have one match that I match on five segments. I have five rows. So then I was curious as well, how many matches are actually in this spreadsheet? Many distinct matches. And there's no point going on display name because I've matched like PG. I could have several different PGs. And as far as I can tell, the only unique key in here, well, there may be another one. I'm just, I'm not too familiar with this file to be honest, but the one that I spotted that was unique was the link to the profile page, and that is a unique ID at the end. So I wanted to count the number of unique match IDs, profile pages I have. So I'm just going to use a little bit of Excel foo. It's going to be some different way in Google Sheets. OK, so I'm just going to copy this column to a new worksheet. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a filter on no, I'm going to put an advanced filter on data. Yeah, so go to data, advanced. You want the first row uses labels. Yes, I do. Click OK on that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it to right beside itself, A to B, B, B1. And here's the, the trick. Click on unique records only. 
and that dedupes. So what this is going to give me a somewhat shorter list because many of my matches are one segment. Just get down to the end. So here's my last row. 1,400, 1,418 matches in the spreadsheet. But there are 1,500 matches in the match list. And I know that simply because there's 25 matches per page. And I, it's filling up to the 60th page. The other thing I should say is that my match list in the website is going down to 0.19% DNA shared. But when I sorted this, I was trying to figure out what the heck is going on. I sorted this on the percentage, percentage DNA shared. When I sort now, expand the selection, yes, please. Sort by giving me what I've percent DNA shared, largest to smallest. Yeah, see, it's only going down to 0.2%. 0 .2%. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's the way it should work, but I don't think so. Yeah, just reading that doesn't say it, lo it cuts it off at 0.2%. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if it's a glitch. Instead of having extra relatives above and beyond the 1500 cap, I lost relatives in the spreadsheet. Okay, well, I'll wrap it up there. Uh, links in the description below to the actual article. And I've got a few other tips and tricks in there and a few more details about the background of what's going on. So I hope that helps and best of luck with your research.